Hello, it's an honor to be here today. I'm, I feel so privileged to be here with this phenomenal group of panelists and to talk about one of my favorite topics, the operative versus non-operative approaches for appendicitis and really thinking about what the evidence to date supports. Appendicitis is one of the most common reasons for emergency abdominal surgery with a lifetime incidence of seven to 14%. It also encompasses an incredibly heterogeneous group of patients. Everything from the 22 year old college student that's healthy that comes in with a few days of abdominal pain to the 87 year old with chronic heart failure, five days of abdominal pain that comes in and is also diagnosed with appendicitis. We know that surgery is a safe option and most people are able to recover and go home the following day. But over 3,000 patients across the world have been randomized to antibiotics or to surgery for appendicitis. And we know that this is a safe option for many of our patients. Controversies in surgery has always been one of my favorite sessions at ACS. It's fascinating to look back at how our mentors manage surgical disease and how research has given us the opportunity to create safer, more effective treatment strategies and more patient-centered treatment strategies for our patients. It's also helped us to determine who to operate on. Consider inguinal hernia surgery. We used to operate on all patients with groin her hernias due to the risk of progression of the size of the hernia or the risk of future strangulation. Randomized trials have allowed us to offer watchful waiting for people with minimally symptomatic biliary disease. And it's allowed us to consider non-operative strategies um, for things like porcelain gallbladder. And medical management has drastically changed the need for emergent operations for peptic ulcer disease. As surgeons, we have a cure for appendicitis with an effective operation with low complication rates and low hospital length of stay and avoids recurrence, it avoids missed neoplasm, I absolutely get why surgeons often ask, why are we even considering medical management for this disease? But asking what matters most to the patients, it really depends on both the time, where they are in their life, and how disruptive this emergency operation might be to them. They wonder, are the benefits of avoiding surgery outweighed by the potential burdens? Is the recurrence of antibiotics too high to consider? And will I eventually need a surgical intervention? They ask, will they have lingering symptoms? Have we made this acute abdominal problem, chronic abdominal pain, that they have multiple ED visits, multiple hospitalization, or multiple primary care visits? And will the anxiety and uncertainty impact the quality of life? And will they be able to return to work and school in a timely manner? Our patients are often considering out-of-pocket costs, and it's important to consider just as we look at the evidence for the trials to recall who was never included in these trials. Patients that were not studied include those with immunosuppression. These are cancer patients on chemotherapy, transplant patients. These were never included in prior trials. Patients that are pregnant or subpopulations of interest, such as the elderly, those with liver disease, heart disease, diabetics, really important subpopulations that we'd love to know if there are increased or decreased risk. But the truth is with rare complications in particular, those subpopulations were never large enough to look at the outcomes for them specifically. So it's important in deciding between antibiotics or surgery with your patients to know what the evidence shows, to be able to weigh what's important to patients and which of those support surgery, or which of those supports antibiotics. Now, when looking at the EQ5D, which is the general health measure measured in both CODA and the APAC trial, there's five domains. It looks at mobility, self-care, ability to return to usual activities, the pain and discomfort people may be having, or anxiety and depression. And that was similar in both the surgical and the antibiotic group at 30 days. Patients often ask, when can I get out of this hospital? And in patients that were randomized to surgery or antibiotics, it was about 1.3 days in both arms. Patients often ask, when will this pain go away? When will my fever go away? That was also about the same in both the surgical and the antibiotic arm. 
When patients say, the thing that's most important to me of avoiding surgery, we know that surgery can be avoided in about six out of 10 patients in the antibiotic group. Of course, is not avoided if you go directly to surgery. For those patients that wish to avoid a hospitalization, well, surgery is a quick operation where people oftentimes go home and some sites even talk about discharging from the PACU. Due to the timing, it's pretty rare to discharge in the same day. With antibiotics, it's possible. In the CODA study, we allowed for patients that were treated with antibiotics and met discharge criteria to leave from the hospital um, emergency department without being admitted. Patients will often ask, I really cannot miss work. Which of these treatment options will get me back to work or back to school faster? And for surgery, it takes longer. It's unclear if this is due to patients' inability to get back to work or if these are instructions that we're giving patients after surgery. But it was 8.7 days compared to 5.3 days in the antibiotic arm. For patients that are hoping to avoid future healthcare visits, in the surgical arm, it was smaller over after the index hospitalization with about 4% of patients having an additional hospitalization uh, in the following three months and about 9% in the antibiotic group. Appendicitis is an excellent opportunity for shared decision-making. In talking to our patients, they'll often say things like these came from our patient stakeholders during the CODA trial. I avoided surgery and was able to get back home to care for my aging mother. I never wanted to end up in this much pain and wait for the emergency department in eight, for eight hours ever again. That came from a patient who wanted to go right to surgery. Surgery took care of the problem once and for all. General anesthesia and surgery were terrifying, being so far from home with no support. It was helpful to have an option for antibiotics. There are a lot of outstanding questions in the management of appendicitis. And antibiotics may be a good option for some of our patients, but probably not all of them. Understanding our patients' goals, their concerns, and discussions of the risks and potential benefit of both treatment options is an approach that is patient-centered and is supported by data. This is a challenge, as it often feels like it takes more time to have these discussions than it does to do the appendectomy. And we're right now in the process of working on implementation tools that will help support these decision discussions with our patients um, to be able to have better informed discussions with them. I wanna thank you for the opportunity to present today to our partners in the CODA trial and for Corey for the support uh, in funding for the trial.